Welcome back to the Java Crash Course series. We're still here, and I see that you are as well. And Brian and I want to demonstrate a Fibonacci sequence using Java. Right. So Brian's going to explain to you, since he's the math geek in the room, what the Fibonacci sequence is. First and foremost, I would have to say Fibonacci sequence algorithm is almost as essential to programmers as Hello World. Yes, I, do. I have to agree with you that <laughs> Fibonacci is a very important mathematician. Yes. Was he even a mathematician? Oh, yeah. No oh, hell. He was, he was awesome. All right, so. All right, so the Fibonacci sequence basically is... If you're hearing weird noises because I'm drinking stuff. <laughs> the, the, the most fundamental Fibonacci sequence is 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. And I don't know if you can see the pattern by me well, explaining this. Is it possible? It's kind of like you can take we the find, number. Can we find maybe a Google image that gives us a... Because it, it is a defined sequence. Oh, like, yeah. It's the same it's, every it's single the time. the number added to the number previous is the next number. Let me see if... Uh, uh, we there can, he is. That's a good looking fella. Now, like the Fibonacci sequence in the form of a rectangle appears in nature a lot. It also, it's also very much related to the golden ratio. Okay, so basically what's happening is you can see every time it's adding the number to the next line. So like 1, and then you see the arrow to the 1, it goes to the next line and adds that number. 1 and 1 is 2. You can see how that line crosses through the 1 and 1. The next line down, it crosses through the 1 and 2 to make 3. Then 1 three plus gets 2 added. is 3. 2 yeah. plus 3 is 5. Right. 3 plus 5 is 8. Right. And so on and so forth. So we're going to write a Java program that is going to calculate these numbers using right. uh, using recursion. A recursion method. So I'm going to close our Firefox web browser. I'm going to Alt-Tab back in the NetBeans, and we're going to create a new project. Uh-huh. Call this new project FIB. F-I-B for the Ooh. man. <laughs> That's him, right? It's an homage. Yeah. The Fibster. Yeah. Right. The Fibmeister. <laughs> so we're coming down here, and this really kind of annoys me, so I'm going to erase that yeah. now. So we're going to create a function, method. We're going to create a method here. Yeah. I got to get out of the C++ mindset, dude. It's just, it's ingrained in my head. So and let's do a, uh, a public static int Fibonacci. Uh, yeah, we'll just go Fibonacci. Uh, F-I-B-O-N-A-C-C-I. Like this? Yeah. All right. And then we're going to pass the parameter n, int n. Int n. All right. So in this uh, in this method, if n is equal to 0, actually, let's let's do the whole, well, we can do negative numbers. It doesn't matter anything in this case. If n is equal to 0, return 0. Mm -hmm. Else, if n is equal to 1, return 1. And hopefully you guys out there understand what why he's doing this. And if not, we'll explain it in a second. Or just go to Google. Google's awesome. <laughs> Else. Whoops. That doesn't belong there. <laughs> wonder how that happened. All right. So now we want to return Fibonacci. And when we call Fibonacci, the, the whole the whole word, Fib is actually the main program, which is kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I don't really know how to spell. All right. So uh, now we're going to, the parameter we're going to pass is n minus 1 mm -hmm. plus mm -hmm. Fibonacci n minus 2. <laughs> and when you actually, and we've done this in programming classes, when you actually work this out on paper, it's one of the craziest things you've ever seen. <laughs> because, like, you, you come down here, you're going to call Fibonacci with this, and then you're going to call it again with this, like, on the same session instance right. at, at the same exact moment. Right. You know, which is cool. It's wild. It's wild. So did, did you want to explain this, or is it self-explanatory? I think it's self-explanatory. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing as uh, the recursive function we did before, but now we're just taking the current one we're at, subtracted by 1, adding it to 2 prior. And if it goes back far enough to 0 or 1, it's going to uh, just return 0 or 1 and continue on its way. All right, so now we're just going to call this function and print it out. So we're going to do a system out print line, Fibonacci, and let's start with, uh, let's do 21. Set so the uh, integer 21. And whenever I have a function inside of a function, I like to have these Space spaces out here so that it looks pretty. Right, so so that looks save good that to you. And run that and see what, see what we get. Control S, F6. Ladies and gentlemen, Fibonacci lives. What do we have here? All right. So when we do a 21 steps of the Fibonacci sequence, that's where we come up with. So if we actually want the number 21, for example, it's going to be 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, which is the eighth step into it. So, we so if we return 20, 
switch 21 with the number 8, mm-hmm. we should get the number 21. It's a more manageable example. Uh-huh. And we get the number 21. So, Brian, before we exit this, this tutorial, is there anything you want to add? That about does it.